Welcome to Cebu Expat by Matt Wilkie, discussing expat life in the Philippines. Can you trust expats in the Philippines? Um, I'll be honest with you. The betrayal of people um, is probably more likely to come from the expat community. Um, the legacy scandal, for example, you have to look that up because it's quite a long-winded thing. Um, but it was for a lot of expats, um, they lost money down to um, an expat, well, several expats in the community. Um, okay, it's an investment thing, but you probably hear me, I won't tell anybody to invest in anything. Um, not directly anyway, I might actually say like the Spanish property things come up at the moment. Um, I can recommend somebody to talk to about it, but I will not directly sell it to you. Um, I wouldn't do that purely because um, investments are a high risk. It doesn't matter how you look at it, they're always a risk. Um, as such, I will not guarantee or promise anything that I can't deliver. Um, that's just the way I am and it's how I've got on in life. Is quite simply, if I promise something, it's because it's possible. Um, so how bad can it get? Well, with the legacy scandal, um, somebody pretended they didn't say what they said um, they threatened to prosecute people um, because they managed to recover most of their money plus i think they reinvested it they reinvested it in these um schemes that's a polite way of putting it until eventually they lost everything um but the fact is they threatened other people that had lost everything um instead of helping them denied it all the way they were um promoting and selling it because um, they were very strong on the sales pitch, is guaranteed with um, guaranteed covered by bank insurance, etc., etc. Um, and then it's like, no, I didn't say any of that. That's one side where you'll find when you arrive in a country, these people will come out of the wood of like work like no tomorrow um, because you're the new guy that's arrived, you're the new guy that doesn't know anything and put your trust in people from the same country. As such, you're, you're more at risk of losing your money than anybody else, but it's not just money. Um, property rentals, they will get you a rental at an inflated price. They will offer you insurance. They will offer 101 different types of ways to make money out of you. Uh, let me just turn my volume off here. Um, they are the expats that hover around the forums. And you'll find, they're not hard to find. And they, they, I don't mind people making a reasonable amount on something. Um, for example, if I rented a property out and made a thousand pesos a month, that's fine. And if anybody else did the same, it's fine. But when some of these go, oh yeah, I've got this one for you. Or somebody's in a very bad situation and they're extorting over a thousand pounds a month out of them. Uh, I don't I don't think it's right um, and these people do it all the time um, so be very aware that because people are expats doesn't mean they're friends they're using you as a commodity in a business um, Spain I've seen how bad it is um, in the Philippines because it was Cebu a lot of people aren't you know there's a few people that are doing things in Spain it's an entire career and there's people been there 20 odd years that have been milking the expats for that period of time and they don't see anything wrong with it because people are stupid enough to pay these high rates and a whole manipulated um, system but in the Philippines it goes on as well and if you go in with that mindset that if somebody's offering you something question why <laughs> um, and it doesn't mean they're all bad it just means that you should always be uh, thinking, okay, well, why do you want to do that? What's so great about this? Um, I remember somebody selling a business, for example. Um, on one day, he would tell me it's doing terrible. And then when somebody's actually looking to buy it, he would say how great it's doing. Um, okay, that's a sales pitch. But at the same time, for me, I wouldn't... Um, sell something that wasn't viable but like i said that's me 
Um, so just be very careful. Very careful who you talk to. Um, it's good to meet other expats, but limit the information they have on you. Um, it's not, you know, you're in a new country, etc. But just be aware of the people around you. They're not all there to help you. Um, and there's some rogue characters out there. I talked before about the <clears throat> one guy helped the other guy by letting him move in um, for a period of time. But then the guy had cut a key and then went back and robbed the place. Um, that is an expat. A lot of expats would do that sort of thing. Um, the people that I would call friends in the Philippines, I could count on around, well, there's less than 20 people I know. Um, people I trust from my friends and family is probably down to five. Um, now bear in mind, I meet a ridiculous amount of people because I'm on here, I'm on my blogs, um, but there's only a very few people that I actually trust. Um, and it's because there's so many bad people out there. Um, you gotta remember the Philippines, because it's islands, um, it's a bit of a location away from civilization in many ways, because some of these people go out in the far flung islands, they just disappear. Um, America's had the one that I think it was number three and the most wanted they picked up a couple of years back. They'd been living out on one of the islands for four years doing English lessons, I believe. Um, that's the sort of people that can be around. And that's why I would say be very careful who you're talking to. Um, doesn't mean they're all bad. It just means be selective and and it's okay to meet people and because within the first five minutes you'll be able to tell if you like a son, like somebody or can trust them or somebody you want to meet again because uh, predominantly people i meet within five minutes i've made the decision that i'm going to meet them again or never speak to them again um because quite simply um the number of people you'll meet is quite high in the philippines if you want to meet other expats but also when you go um, and meet them face to face, you'll find the drunks, the womanizers, the abusers, the weirdos, um, the paedophiles, all sorts. I mean, they interweave in the normal expat community. Um, people like you and me that are normal are, don't make up the majority of the expat community, um, unfortunately. Oh, um, it's hard to explain until you've done it. You, you'll, anybody that's actually been there and seen people will understand this. Um, and it's not the picking these people out, it's because it's the way people are. Um, you get a lot of guys in from the US, for example, which are racist. Um, they uh, see women as second citizens. And I'm not saying all Americans before anybody even bothers with that one. It's generally people from a certain part of the US that, that um, have those viewpoints. Um, and it's not a case of discussing it. They, they, they are simply, they don't, they're like, they are who they are. Um, if you can live with their attitude, I would say, okay, that's up to you, but at the same time, it's not it's not my attitude, and it's something I don't appreciate. That says I don't understand feminism myself because they want everything, then they're giving it, and then they still want more, and pick and choose the other bits. That's feminism to me. Um, it doesn't mean I'm sexist because I'm quite happy to be equal, um, but equal to me is a woman doing exactly the same as I do. Um, when I have to alter something to suit them, then it's no longer equal, which makes the whole thing a farce. Um, so from my point of view, that feminism st stuff just doesn't make sense. If they actually said, right, this woman's exactly the same as you, okay, that's fine. But when you go, this woman's doing the same job as you, um, 
and she's getting the same. I want her to have the same pay, but she doesn't work away from home because um, cause she got kids. She doesn't do uh, nights and weekends because she's got to work family friendly hours and she won't work evenings um, in the office because she needs to be at home for the kids coming home from school. That's not equality. And it's not adapting to suit their needs. It is actually restructuring everything to suit their needs. Very different. So that's the difference. But when somebody goes shaking a glass and expecting their girlfriend to run over and fill it up with um, alcohol and ice, that's sexist. That's, that's, second, that's why I say second, treating women as a second class citizen. That's what some guys do. Um, that's why I don't deal with those people. But that's why I don't go on forums too much anymore. It's why I don't waste my time on people that are a waste of time to me. Um, I'm more interested in cultured people. I'm more interested in people that have a positive outlook. I'm more interested in people that have been to countries I haven't been. Um, Kento, for example, had just come in from Japan. Um, Kento's a Japanese American. He just come in, um, uh, rent an apartment office for over a year. Um, yeah, my social circle's a bit more like that. It's, we're more interested. In, we're, I'd say we're like grown up backpackers. I think that's more my community where we have an interest in travel, uh, politics, cultured, hi cultured history, etc. Um, concerns over the way the, the world is going at the moment. Um, Ollie, for example, Ollie's been traveled the world for over two years on the motorbike, uh, been all over India, Africa, um, through Asia. That's the type of people I like meeting. And it doesn't mean I don't mind the average person. The, the average person would be fine. The average Western person would be fine, I'll be honest with you. It's just I don't like the drunks. I don't like the violent people. I don't like the abusers, etc. I have no time for them. Um, and it may sound I'm quite aggressive by saying I don't like these, like that. I'm interested in real people. Um, if people have got these major issues in their lives, and they bring them to Asia, um, it's a continuation of problems that they brought with them. Um, a lot of time they don't admit they're the problem. Um, see, it's very hard for me to understand why somebody would actually come out of a community that they were in originally with a lot of problems um, and then move to another community and still not understand that they were the central problem. Um, because the reality is, if they can't recognize their own um, issues, how can they correct them? You know, and these are the people that are normally the old bleeding hearts on uh, forums or whatever, when they complain they've been arrested for this, I didn't do anything, blah, blah, blah. I mean, the guy at Bill Hall, was a, he's got bipolar issues. Um, he was whining about his wife taking the house, done this, done that. And then he, after like a conversation, he then goes, oh yeah, she, it's because I go to the bars, I like bar girls, blah, blah. Right, so to be honest with you, I don't blame your wife at all. Um, you've humiliated her in her own community. Um, she's married you as a upstanding person at face value. You've turned around and become a womanizing drunk. I see no problem with her leaving you at all and taking as much as she can because you put her in a position where she can't go backwards. She's now permanently married to him. Um, but these guys, they don't see it. They can't see it in themselves that they are the issue. Um, okay. Thanks for watching.